welcome to the Flatback 4 podcast with me, your host, Andy Maguire. Uh, we have Scott Eaglin and we have a very special guest joining us, our very first guest, actually, on the Flatback 4, ex-footballer, ex-manager and now Sky Sports pundit, Mr Ian Dowie. How are you doing, mate? I'm doing very well. So Good uh... man, good man, good man. Um, listen, before we get into it, it's the, the standard question. How is Corona life treating you and have you baked any banana bread? Because that seems to be the thing. No, I haven't ate. In it. Sorry, I haven't made any, but you can see I've ate plenty. So, um, <laughs> um, what so I have John, a bit more, bit more used to being in the garden, which I'm not really a gardener. I just cut the lawn, but I'm, I'm getting more and more used to being a gardener, which is not something I love. To, to be honest, mate, I was going to say people have been doing new skills as well, whether it be baking or gardening. So you're not usually a gardener, but that's what the coronavirus has made. I don't think I'll ever be a gardener, but you know, I, I'm, as, as in my playing career, I'm, I, I try hard. That's about all. <laughs> you you run on the grass. You never just used to cut it. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so look, we're going to get into it with, with, with the Premier League, okay? I mean, we, I think we're all sitting back and watching to see yeah. how Bundesliga. Obviously, they, they, I think we all we're sitting back looking, see what they're doing. It. We watched it, very weird atmosphere. Um, obviously, the players have been told that they can go back and, and train now. Some players are, you know, it's their own opinion. Um, first and foremost, what do you think should happen to the Premier League? Null and void, or do we try and get this season done any way, shape or form, whether that takes us to November? Any way, shape or form, <laughs> we've got to get it out, played out. I mean, that's the ideal scenario. And listen, I've got to say, first and foremost, we, we have four leagues here. And you know, not many others mm. go that that well. Very next to no one goes that deep. And even the integrity you think about, I'm looking at Swindon and you know, even Shelton that may be promoted without if they were to null and void games, you know, in terms of that, an extra above them. So I think we have to try and get them game play if we can. Now, I've got to say, I do think it's a lot more difficult for League One and League Two. Yeah. To carry mm-hmm. their games out with the sheer, sheer scale of the finance. So I'm, I've been there, I've been there at Oldham, I've been at Oldham when we were in administration. So I, I've been there, I understand it. So um, it's very, very difficult. And I understand why people want Null and Void now in, in League One and League Two. But I do think the Championship it has to. And, the and the, the and Championship League. can probably um, you know, survive maybe without fans as well. But even that, just that factor of League One and League Two. Obviously, having no fans and them gate receipts is already going to have a knock-on effect. But for the footballing-wise, Leeds and West Brom, I mean, we're both Leeds fans, you know, and uh, it would be very hard to get, after all these years being down there, to get promoted in this way or not get promoted. No, would be, it, it would be It would be terrible. But um, at the same time, we all, we all want to see it done safe. Uh, but at the minute, I only really hear the Premier League. I've not really heard much yet from the Championship and what they're no. going to do and that. So... Are they again waiting for the Premier League to go back, see how that goes, and then? Well, I've, got, I've got some friends of mine, one of them's in very much involved with Forest, you know, the, the chairman there. So, you know, they're, they're all desperate to get it done. You look at that, to be fair, seven points clear leads. Um, and I've been I've done a lot of leads this year, and it, it's it been staggering. I mean, I've been there at their lowest ebb when they were three and up against Cardiff and drew three all. Hmm. Staggering. But, but, but I've got to say, the atmosphere, and, you know, what I would be, there's no doubt. If, if, if they made it null and void and no promotion or relegation, I think there'd be a legal challenge. And, and yeah. I think that that's just not the way, you know, I, I do think, I mean, it's not that many games left, you know, what you're talking about, another seven, eight, nine games, but they've yeah, got yeah. to smash it and, and get it done. That's why I do understand doing it at home, home venues, if you can. That's the number one priority. If you can get it at their own venue, play out the fixtures as and where they were with no fans. I understand that. But... If that can't be the case, then let's get it done in neutral venues. You know what I mean? I mean, what I don't really understand is how much more of a threat it is, other than the travelling side of it, to be to do it at Leeds rather than say do it in and around, um, you know, the, the centre for football in, in in Burton. You know, I don't really understand yeah. why. I think that's I think that's only the only thing I'd say is, is vast open spaces. But I think to have that to have that film would be weird. I still think you've got to have a stadium of sorts. So they're talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. 10 stadiums in the Premier League. As you say, we haven't heard from the Championship. I think they have yeah. to play them with it within within stadium. But worst case, and I think that's the only way to do it, if, if we can't do each venue, then do it at neutral venues, which I don't think really works particularly well for anyone. But, but I think that has to be done. We do do it. 
and as well, I suppose, like with pitches, people maybe say like the way Arsenal play in the you know, big open pitch and, and whatnot. And the, the, I mean, for me, it's more the, a great point uh, Kenny Dalglish made. He said, you know, why are Brighton so concerned about not playing at their own ground? They've only won three or four all season. So, you know, I realistically, I mean, and, and I thought that was a brilliant point because it was, you know, you, you, you know, all right, the, the crowd and you can, you know, you want to win more games at home, but... You know, the thing is, if someone like Brighton, you know, it might actually do them better with no crowd think, there. Pressure off. Fixtures, Brighton's fixtures are the most yeah, horrendous. They fixtures are terrible. Ever seen they are life. terrible. So, my view is, don't forget, when people say oh, we want to play at home, don't forget, they're, they're also taking that away from the big clubs who are now playing at neutral venues too. So, mm. what I'm saying is, there's some, what you gain is your away games not being as focused. And in the end, you've seen the Bundesliga. Has it been a success? You've got to say, of course, not unqualified, but, you know, I mean, I've watched a lot of it. I mean, my son has sat and watched it, much to the Shangri-La of the ladies in the house, but we've watched a lot of football. Um, it's been been interesting. The standards has been decent. You see them tail off. You see goals in the game because the fitness is not there. The people have said to me, oh, we need four weeks. I think Steve Bruce said we need... I get that, but I just don't think that's going to happen. No. You're going to get... They're going to tell you, and then a week and a half, two weeks later, it's going to start, and everyone's going to be in the same boat for another two weeks. Yeah, well, you actually, you read my mind there because I'm going to say, what do you think that will be for the? How long do you think they'll give them? Because um, obviously, they're, they're not used. To, I mean, everyone's used to having a pre-season, getting the season done, having two or three weeks off, albeit if there's any internationals. Because you've been a player and as a manager, how how will that affect the players coming back after maybe you know nine, ten weeks of no football? Okay, they've been training at home, the fit guys, we all know that. But that mentality of actually not playing for nine or ten weeks and going in for seven or eight games. I mean, I, I probably think it's more worse for a manager. I don't know what you think about it. What, I think, I think, what would be? I think, I think three. I think three games is going to take you to get you fit. I mean, yeah. my view is there's all different types of players. Yeah, you know, I use it as a Premier League example. There's a James Milner. You know, he's going to be right on the button and and, and, and at the level. And there'll be other players like that. But other players are naturally fit and and won't do as much. Yeah. But. You know, the ball work side of it, you feel your touch, the weight of your pass, how it runs on the grass, all them silly little things, you sound bizarre, set pieces, over hitting them, under hitting them, all them things will take time. So that's what I say. But they'll all be, everyone will be in the same boat. So I would think, I think you'll get to a level within, I think, three games, you'll be back at the best games yeah. you'll see. I just, and also, I do think you're going to get goals in the game. I just, I just, you've seen that in the Bundesliga, really. It's, it's, been, it's been very open at times. How good were Dortmund's goals the other oh, night? I mean, I mean, Haaland's open fit, the way he oh. just opened up his body. I mean, he's a Leeds boy. I mean, he was born in Leeds, uh, but he, uh, <laughs> but he, uh, he, they all took the goals well. But he's just that sense of uh, you know, when a goal goes in, we all expect you know, especially at Dortmund, eighty thousand fans just to to go crazy. But the fact I was like you, we were sat, and me and Scott were texting each other, going, "It's just great to have football back on the oh, screen." He, I mean, it's and just. It, I played at the Westfalen Stadium, although it's a different name now. It's a special, special atmosphere. Yeah. I mean, he, yeah. but the way he caresses that ball in, you know, uh, that's not an easy finish. It's, flip, it's a brilliant ball in, by the way. But, it, but he just he just opens his foot up and cushions it into the back of the net. I thought how very Dowie esque, actually. How, <laughs> how, how good is he? I would have headed that, by the way. I would have headed it. I'm going to say, yeah, you just scooped down. Um, how, uh, how good is Haaland? Because obviously, Man United, you know, apparently there was talks going on for him and stuff like that. But. He decided to go to Dortmund. Great move for him, really, because Dortmund is a good club and it's another springboard for him. Do you think he was right making the move? I mean, not that Dortmund is a, is a lesser club than Man United, but probably the way that the transitional period at Manchester United is still going on. I think I personally think he made the right move going to Dortmund. He has now. <laughs> I mean, yeah. my view is it's an, it was it open. I've got to say, I was I was almost wow because his record was quite staggering to go for that little money. I'm not talking about that in yeah. threatening world football. That is, a, you know, he's going to be, who knows, 120 million now. So um, in the modern market, but so has it been good for him? Perfect. Better players, more focus on him. Big, big reputation to. And by the way, has he stepped up? Incredible. And, you know, if, if, what can't he do? He's quick as he's quick as light. He's powerful. There's loads of aspects to his game. I mean, he'd be one of the you know, one of the best young strikers in world football. I mean, difficult I to compare, but I'd say... Did, did, did you ever play against his dad? He's a, just a little step behind. Yeah, I did. He's a did little you? step behind Mbappe, because people... Mbappe doesn't get the credit he deserves for a lad of his age still. Oh, he's I mean, unbelievable. He's been phenomenal. He, he reminds me of Ian Dowie. 
Oh, I wish. Yeah. <laughs> just, just off the yard, yeah. Yeah. He, um, yeah, no, Mbappe, is a, he's going to be a special player for a lot of years as well. And uh, actually, interesting, while we're on that, because I'm going to move on to Liverpool, if if um, the Salah situation, it, Salah's 28 now, right? And if, if Liverpool were looking to cash in and say if he wanted to go to Real Madrid, Mbappe, Liverpool, that'd be frightening. I mean, there's oh. been little talks about it. Um, I do think that he's too good for the for the French league, but he is also young and he's going to grow. I mean, he's got a World Cup already behind him, for, for God's sake. you know. But he is going to be a player for me that if Liverpool are going to compete for a, a lot of years, we don't want them to go 30 years again. Um, what, well, they're not going to do that. I mean, well, listen, they're not, like, no. no, they're not going to do that. And just like Leeds, Leeds are going to go up this year. I mean, listen, whatever you say, about Leeds and by the way the boy Ben White's special special talent. oh absolutely um, I mean to, to one to one so young to do what he's done you know the likes of Harrison Hernandez oh, is an cool. outstanding player in the league probably the best player on his day in the league sounds bizarre but he has that moment I know he's a little bit older now but he has moments that just light up games yeah. so and, you know Calvin Phillips you know he's a special player mm. So do you think, all right, going on to, to, to Calvin then, uh, me and Scott, we can have different opinions on Calvin Phillips. You know, when there was talk of England squad, for me, unless we were absolutely depleted, you don't go into the championship. I think you need to play week in, week out with the best players in the world, Premier yeah. League. Uh, but I can understand why people are touting him because he is good and he, he, he is excellent. Um, do you think a, a, a top six club would look at Phillips or do you think yeah. you'd be best off going to a, a mid-table? I, I, I would. Would you? I think, okay. I think he's that good. I, I, and... Can I also say the manager's special. Mm. Not, not just <laughs> Funny special. you say that. Okay, not right, special. Okay. Very, very special. You know, I know people talk about Pep and you know, uh, saying things about him, but actually, see what he's done with the players he had. Not being funny, he's, he's transformed. Like, I mean, listen, like Stuart Dallas has been for Northern Ireland. Stuart Dallas is a transformed player. You know, so I'm a great admirer of his philosophy. Don't forget. He was a disciplinarian in his time with Argentina. You know, you had to have your hair cut and all that when he was manager. So he, he, he just lives and breathes football. I mean, the, the, yeah. I think the lad, someone tells me that the bin he sits on, he allowed it to be sponsored, but only because if the lad was bought something like 200 grand's worth of facilities for the training ground. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, no, right. It was Wish, it was Wish, I think wish they sponsored it. it. Yeah, it's yeah, true, yeah, Wish, yeah. Yeah, Wish, but uh, I mean, Bielsa, I mean, there's no danger. Me and Scott, we're, you know, we're very realistic Leeds fans and, and we do, we think Bielsa is, is fantastic what he's done with the club and, and like you said, he took a group of players that were average one season and he really did. There is, there's, there's, criticisms of Bielsa and look, we're, you know, we're, we're fans and we just sit, we do watch Leeds week in, week out. And sometimes he makes the subs a little bit late and and whatnot. And he, his teams are notorious for burning out. We, we've and it, it has that has we gone through that his season, career. But we saw that last yeah. season. We should have gone up last season. We probably would have had this now. Yeah. I've got to say, can I say, nine out of the last ten seasons, Leeds's points tally has been much much lower in the second half of the season as first, even before Bielsa got there. So mm. my view is, listen, he's a special special talent. You know, this will get the owners of the club out of jail. By the way. Although they're paying him a lot yeah. of money, we'll get him. Yeah. Why, why do you think that? Is Leeds it? United, Leeds United should be being bought by someone like who's going to buy Man, um, Newcastle. Buy Newcastle. Yeah. Same, it's that, it's that level of club. You know, and I know if they do all the ground there, if they, if they refurb it, and the track, you know, and the training ground is not what it was. But if they they, they need a profit, they get seventy five thousand in a heartbeat on a, in a big game if they're up challenging the Premier League. Just would. I agree. What, why, why do you think that? Is it Leeds have tailed off in the past? Ian, do you think it's just pressure from from fans. No, I think. Listen, there's a huge expectation. I, listen, I, I, you won't remember, but um, we went there when I we, we promoted season. We went there when Stuart um, Stuart was manager, and we, uh, in, in when I was at Palace, we went there. You were sixth. We were eighth and coming up a bit, or fifth or sixth. And um, we, we played you at, at sort of seven games before the end of the season, and it was a it was a ferociously physical mm. game. The whole end was open. Thirty nine thousand. You know, the top end was open. But it was a very physical, nasty game, and we we were, we had both. We could play a lot of football, but we also had. A, so I made a couple of changes. We were digging in. Sean Derry played for us. We were we, we beat you one 0 But when we came off, the atmosphere was absolutely not hostile. Almost, you know, it was one of them. You were you had a little feeling that you didn't want to look too much in the crowd. You yeah. might you might you might. You know, it was <laughs> it was it's ferocious because of the, the, the the passion of the fans. So I think you have to be a certain player. To be able to cope with that. Now, I think Bielsa takes that all on himself and soaks it up. But I, I, I really do. I mean, and it looks like Bamford's come to a bit of form, which is great for him because, yeah. you know, it, it, but I just think you've got seven points. 
you know that home ground i just i, I just i think two two or three gets you there and you, you know yeah uh, yeah I, I agree. Going. I mean, but but like we said, if if the season you know got null and voided, or if Leeds, if they decided to promote Leeds and West Brom, Fulham will be looking and going, "Hang on a minute, we were we were only a few points, you know, yeah, with I eight agree. games left." So obviously, like we said, well, I think we're going to have to just sit back and see how that um, how that goes. Go, just going back to Liverpool, this Liverpool team that we're watching at the minute, oh. obviously the push Man City so close last year, and I mean it was. Who, it was a toss of a coin. How good is this Liverpool team compared to the ones that you'll have watched more back in the late 80s? Obviously, well, it's a different game. Well, but... well, it is different. I've got to say, them teams were amazing. I mean, you've gone up there and got an absolute hiding when you went there. I mean, they played with the tango ball at the time. I think maybe you lads won't remember it, but they were proper yeah, no, no. balls. They zinged about. You, should, you know, it was like watching. They were so much better than everyone else. Um, what do I think? I think, listen, they've got two players in Trent Alexander-Arnold. And are, are you... I've said this on Sky. He's the best I've ever seen on the ball. I'm a fan, mm-hmm. and and Scott Scott's not the greatest fan in the world of Trent. Any of us think to me, old yeah. Danny? I was, I'm saying he's better on he's better than any other right back I've ever seen. So Trent yeah. Alexander was the best right back I've ever seen on the ball, and I think we're looking at probably amongst the best three centre backs in the world ever. Maybe maybe the best in the world ever. Mm. Really? In, in in yeah, in Van Dijk. Do, do you think um, do you think Trent will end up at right back because he's got such a swing on him? He's got that Beckham esque, you know, that right. I agree. Wing. I think I think they'll push him. I think they'll push him further up. Uh, um, can, but my view is that you don't have to defend here a lot with him. <laughs> that position. He gets so much ball in that position. Why wouldn't you do that? I mean, my, I, I just think I, I watched him at Aston Villa, and, and I said it after the Villa game. They they, they end up winning two one late on. Yeah. Trent Alexander will hit a 70 yard crossfield ball. It, 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 it went like just an arrow, just about 20 feet off the ground. Zoom. Then he hit this brilliant curling ball that went about 60 yards. Then he definitely bent one with the outside of his boot into a, you know, he, he can do everything. And listen, he's a special lad. He's a Liverpool lad. I just think if he becomes a good defender, and, yeah. you know, and don't, don't, you know, that's, that's just his age. He's, he's a good, decent defender now. Just to improve that a little bit, he's going to be. How Special. clever was that last year in the Champions League when he did that, when he ran and then he, and he oh. swooped it in for Divock Origi? For, yeah. for a 20-year-old lad, I mean, Agreed. you know, you've been, you've been on the pitch there. Um, that was unbelievably quick thinking and, and actually quite... Uh, just something that happens once in a game. He must have just had that moment and he goes, well, if the ref pulls me up on it, was that the naivety, but the brilliance of being naive to be able to do that? I, th- I think it's not being... I don't know his full background, but my view is... That's someone who's unbelievably football aware. Mm. So, mm. and in this, in the heat of the moment, he sees the opportunity. He doesn't. He just does it. He knows he can execute it, and he does it. And you know, in the end, it, it's, it's, it's quite staggering. But you know, in terms of what Klopp's done, you, you have to give him. I mean, he has to be amongst the very best. You know, in what he's done. Well, manager. You look at the, you look at the players that he's brought in. What he's done with Salah. What he's done with Firmino, who, who doesn't like. You know, Firmino, an amazing player. Great, and last, I yeah. say, people, people talk about Salah. Sane is a some player. Yeah. I mean, Sane's been their best player for, for an hour mm-hmm. season. I, think he's I, I agree. He, he's been that good in that 2019 season. Uh, tw- you know, 2020, it's, it's just. I mean, look, look at Henderson as well. I mean, you know, Henderson's had his critics. You know, me and Scott have actually always been fans of Henderson. You know, yeah, obviously, me. I love him. Yeah, me too. You know, massive, massive boots to fill with Gerard, and no one said that he was going to step up and score twenty goals. That's not what you're going to get from Jordan Henderson. Great passer. You, oh, great, great passer. passer. Great passer. Great passer. Yeah, he, no, not just know, a good he, passer. People say to me, he does it. He's a great passer. It's a oh, he long is. over ball. He's, an, he's, a, he's a proper player. He's a man. He's a leader of a club at Liverpool. And now, who would say he shouldn't be captain? You know, yeah, exactly. exactly, and as well, Champions League under his belt is about to be a Premier League champion. I, th- I think Henderson has answered his critics and more, especially in the late. I mean, he's only 29, 30. He's still got a good. If they wanted to keep him three or four years because he and keeps. By the way, he may have been the best player. Well, in, in, I, I, well, I agree. I agree. I, 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 I thought he was, I thought he was English best player at the tour last tournament. Oh, I did it. He was. He was the best player there. Yeah, I know. That was, you know, I just wonder whether we'll look Bring back it. after that Russia World Cup and just think, God, that wasn't up. If, yeah. if Harry Kane had a squared it, you know, <laughs> would have got through. And you just think, God, we were so... Because that, that team and, and what Gareth's done, I mean, touching on, on England, what Gareth Southgate's done, I wouldn't have expected that from Southgate, but he's really, really changed a lot of yeah, people's I agree. mentality. I, agree. Uh, well, I have played with Gareth to Palace, don't forget. So he's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah. a very bright man, very intelligent, very intense, 
but good fun. He's good, good, good character about him. He's, I love the way he celebrated. You know, that's mm. a, you know, you have to have these moments. What Klopp, that's what I love about Klopp. You know, Bielsa, you don't see it with Bielsa because I think he's old school. But yeah, he's down his side. I know he is. You know, he's he's done he's done many a brilliant thing. But you know, Klopp celebrates like you should celebrate. I agree. Uh, obviously, now because of the Euros not uh, happening, um, and obviously we don't know what's going to happen when the league's going to start again. How do we feel like with the with the Qatar World Cup now? Obviously, in winter, is this coronavirus outbreak going to affect following leagues? And then this Qatar World Cup, which for me was corrupt from the get go, <laughs> is that then going to sling in another uh, obstacle in a couple of years um, to try and get the league on track? Do you think there will be a knock on effect, or do you think maybe in two years we can get back to that September May? Uh, league and we'll eventually get back to it, but I think I uh, listen. There's a lot of, I mean, you're talking about Northern Ireland being at the playoff, we're going to go play, play away against Bosnia, you know, and and uh, I was doing the games and 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 then home against Slovakia or the Republic of Ireland if it if it yeah. beat Bosnia. So, so now it's looking March. I mean, listen, it's difficult, and don't forget you've got the World Cup and then you've got the, the Nations League, which I think will have to go to the wall. The Nations League, yeah, mm. so um, I mean, that's the only logical thing. Can't I quite like the Nations I League. I more, quite more liked football. it. Yeah, I'd, I'd quite liked it. And in fact, Northern yeah. Ireland lost all the games. Um, <laughs> and I should have won all the games. But um, it's, it, I just think it's, there's that much football play. You, something's got to give. Yeah. we um, j- Just going back onto, onto your career there, it's, it's a good little insight. But obviously, as a player and then going to a manager, you um, obviously played with one of my favourite players, Shearer. You, were you with him for a year? Was it a year you must have been with Shearer at, at Southampton? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, looking at Shearer and what he went on because he had that horrendous knee injury did you know at that age like with Shearer that he was just going to be absolute he was going to be prolific at that age mm, uh, did I I mean yeah it, it, uh, yeah so well I, what I knew was it was a hell of a play yeah oh I've lost you there a little bit Ian I lost him are you there Ian is anybody there So we'll just wait for uh, Ian to get back there. But yeah, I mean, obviously we're on about Trent there, Scott. Um, thinking that you know he could turn into one of the best right backs, uh, you know, with the, if he works yeah. on his events. I think that's what you were saying as well, wasn't it, mate? Like, it was if, free. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, we got you back, Ian. No, it, it's, it must be that. It must be our Lancashire. Uh, uh, perfect. Is he back in? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Must be the um, side. Just calling Will. No, fine. So, you know, what <laughs> um, I was yeah, saying, he, he, he didn't think he was quick. He was unbelievably quick with the ball when he was running, powerful, was running behind you, which people forget. People forget how much you are running behind you. He, he wasn't massive, but was incredibly good in the air. What I thought was, if you would, if, if you had, if ball was whipped in the box, he was fearless and incredibly aggressive enough to know that nothing no one's going to get before him and it didn't matter what you you've seen you've seen all the games i'm sure but it didn't matter what you bring to him you kick him boot him he didn't even flinch he's used to that he you know was he's, a, he's a tough boy it was an old yeah. school yeah. footballer wasn't it yeah great lad I've, I've always had a good, great relationship with him he's been he, he he deserved what he's got and he hey, is great. yeah i just he, he, he just he's straight he tells you you know he, he tells you how it is um and you know he's is is when only when i went to newcastle you realize why i went back because it's a leeds united it's another one then you know it's a special it club when, when you've been a when you've been a geordie standing on the gallagher end like he was to wear the number nine shirt look what he's done i mean yeah. I know, one, you I know, know. winning the title which is really amazing Ian, I've, um, yeah. I've, I've been watching a lot of Harry's Heroes over the last couple of days, and I've also been yeah. watching a lot of uh, Premier League years. And I've noticed that your link-up play with Matt Letizia was unbelievable. Was he probably one of the best you've played with? Oh, well, I mean, Matt, Matt, Matt had an incredible skill, and I think when he went through on goal, he did not believe he was going to miss. Yeah. I went through on goal, the target hit the target. That was my sort of aim there. He was thinking... I'm putting this right in the top corner, you know. So, it, 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 I mean, I think he used to have a bet with Dennis Wise at Chelsea 
um, that, you know, with penalties, you know, and if you hit the inside of the post, I think five to one, I think he did it two or three times. I think he did do it two or three times. You know, yeah. so he changed from 50 quid for if he scored, 250, you know what I mean, in terms of that. <laughs> yeah. it, it, he had an incredible ability to, I mean, he could, I mean, he, he did the first Rabona I've ever seen, but his volume was staggering. Uh, his striking of a ball was, and he, it sounds like he's a goal for a three or four now. Mm. It, it doesn't surprise me. He's just, he just has that natural talent. He, and he could have gone anywhere and played. Listen, people say he wasn't fit. He was he fit. Was fit. Yeah. He yeah. around. He, but he was an outstanding footballer. And, you know, you, know, you can't say what he'd become because, uh, because he didn't do that. Because, you know, not being funny, he played with black lads. Um, as, as we used to say, we, a team through hammer throwers who um, who used to keep us up every year, just about in the Premier League. But he was yeah. a, the icing on the cake, and, and it was fitting that he scored really the last good, goal. You know, wasn't a good it? Team, mate. He, he scored the last goal, didn't he? The, yeah, he did, uh, yeah. the, the old Dell, which yeah, great, great for Matt this year because he he comes across as such a great guy. You know, like you say, when you went through, you were just like, this goal's going to be either special. Or he's just going to score and do whatever Matt Letizia wants to do with the ball. And that, that, from watching him, especially that was our era. You know, I started watching football early 90s and uh, Matt Letizia, you just, he, I don't know, you almost wanted him to get a big move. But also at the same time, it was nice. You know that he loved that club. Loyalty. There's something quite nice. Yeah. yeah, something quite nice about that with him. Um, yeah, just touching yeah. on you there, when you play for it, when you play for a, a team and then you go on and manage, uh, so like said, like with Palace, when you went to manage Palace, how does that feel when you go, I've played here and now I'm a manager? That the, the whole because I'm guessing like it's maybe same kit man there or tea ladies and stuff like that. When you walk back into a club, does it feel almost like, wow, this is a bit strange because now I'm the main man rather than part of the squad? Like, I think I think you know going to Oldham first, you know, in, yeah. and I'd always wanted to be obviously Jerry France, who was magnificent with me at, the, at uh, QPR. He's a great guy. Taught, taught me so, and well, a brilliant coach. Um, taught me so much. Very much a disciplinarian in terms of, but, but love to play. So, tra- tra- style of play, but in terms of showing me the way and bits and pieces and learning. I had my own way, and I was always, well, I was always had, always had a thing where I wanted us, you know, our, our teams to be fit and, 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 and energetic and, and, and expressive, if you like. What did be like me? Be, be, be good, at, be easy on the eye, but. Um, um, it, he, he helped me a lot. So I did that, ended up going to Oldham. You know, we had a fantastic first year, Mike, with, uh, you know, with some fantastic players. I took a couple of lads from non-league, one of them, even Ernie Cooks, God bless him, is not here anymore. Unfortunately, died at a, a, a tragically young age. But, you know, Wayne Andrews and Fitzhall um, revamped the side, played with three at the back. We, we got going and we had, we had David Ayres, we had John Sheridan, two of the best players. John Sheridan, yeah, great John player. John Sheridan, top draw. I mean, yeah. and a top draw lad. David Ayres was up there with him in terms of technical beat. I played him as a left wing back, but he never defended. Didn't want him to defend, just stay up there. And um, yeah. we had a great run. But we went into also into administration. So the following year, with, with the chairman who took the money out and, and, and um, bits and pieces went on. But that gave you a lot. And then to go into Palace, uh, <laughs> You know, we, was it a mentality? Did you always want to be a manager? Did yeah. you read the game differently? Well, I always, no, always like, want the coach. I always want the coach. Okay. I okay. love. Okay. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I mean, listen, I'm a I'm a coach manager, so I'm a manager who wants yeah. to coach. I wouldn't be one of them who'd sit and, and let me let other people do it. That I find that very difficult. Okay. That's my nature. I want to get out in the field, so I've got a pro license and I, I love coaching. But when I worked, I, I remember my first day at Palace when when we were there and. And I, and I took training and, and phys- the, the fitness lad who I played with when I, when I was at Palace came up and whispered in my ear and said, we need to calm down here. This is, you know, people, someone's going to injure you. And I, I said, <laughs> I, I, I looked at him, one, because he interrupted me in the middle of the session and said, don't ever interrupt me again, but we're doing three of these, three of these sessions. And his eyes, he, he glazed over. Yeah. And as it happened, the lads did, did brilliantly. And we trained incredibly hard uh, um, that season. And... We, we, we found a, we found a way in the end to, to well you know yeah incredible you know but, but let, let me tell you that is about the players when you think about that Andy Johnson got 26 goals from, so I took over Christmas 26 goals from Christmas yeah, yeah. So, it's a good player um, wasn't he was a good and, player and lad, Michael Hughes should have played all his league in the Premier League top player Aki Villati, outstanding individual you know um, we had Mark Hudson we had Julian Sperone we had Danny Danny you know, top players. Um, Danny Spironi was good, wasn't he? Spironi yeah, was really good. And then 
you've got uh, this and a uh, special mention for Neil Shipley, you know, yep. it was mm. a difficult time of, of late and what a fantastic lad he was around the place at the time, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. I know, but then, we, then I had two Mavericks. I had, I had Wayne Routledge, young boy, and I had Julian Gray, who couldn't, was one of the best athletes I ever worked with. You couldn't. Julian you Gray was, he was a he could, fitness fanatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah credible. Um, but, you know, we, we, and we found that we we found a way to get the job done. Danny Granville left back. Really, that was a team that played. You know, we had um, uh, Tony Popovich, who, who was who was great. Okay. Player. We had Mikhail Ledgerwood. You know, Fitz played a bit in the, with all them people. But you know, get that season to come up. They were incredible. Mark Mark Hudson played a part from from Fulham, but um, you know, and so did Powley, Darren Powell. They, mm. they were top draw players. And they really helped us, you know what I mean, in terms of what we did. But they, they were good players. So I just couldn't yeah. understand that. I mean, not being funny, you can't go from being where they are, four points off bottom or two points off bottom, mm. third, fourth bottom, to winning, I don't know, 18 out of 26 games or something. So, yeah. You know, it's what it was in, it's to, to go and do it. But the players deserve, not me, not the chairman, the players were yeah. phenomenal. There was some, Amart, yeah, there was some great John individuals Harvey, as well. Yeah, John Harvey, yeah. Did, well, um, Kit Simons, they deserve a lot of credit, a lot of, because, you know, I was, uh, me and John worked on very hard, Kit was a much better, you know, this might, we need to, you know, back down a little bit there and do this a little bit less, and, you know, he was a, an easy, we were hard task, whilst Kit had that little bit of that more softness about him, and then it, that worked really well. Are you, are you missing the management, or are you lacking doing the punditry at the minute now? It's, no, uh, I, 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 I've always missed it. Management, management, some yeah. love. I mean, you can't get better than you know, get a bag of balls and some bibs and some cones. And I've, I've always said to people, anyone, you go and try and do it and make it in 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 front of professional footballers. That's a hard skill for anyone to do. You've got to go there, and make that. You've got to make sure you grab their attention, be self, be, be critical, make them inventive, and it's something you love, especially when it works. You know, in the end, when you win on Saturdays. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. That's, that, that's the that's the be all and end all. You know what I mean? It, it, and, that, and it doesn't matter. Does it? You, you can you can lose seven games, and as long as your team wins one, you're leave full of ecstasy. It's unbelievable. As a fan, um, obviously, as a manager, you know it's a results game and, and whatnot. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I can understand. You know, but it just it, it's so interesting when you hear a footballer go into uh, to, you know to the management side of it. You know, the, the like Lampard's doing it now. I'm really interested to see how Lampard gets on. I think he's an intelligent guy. He's gonna. I think he's gonna do great. Yeah, um, I mean, I was but, with uh, Frank. Frank. I mean, Twitter out where Harry said a lot. Frank worked incredibly hard at his game. What if what if he came? I mean, he, he deserves not. And it's not. Also, I don't like the scenario. Is that he's worked so hard to done that. That in in bred to him and his dad was a top player. He's mm. a top. He had a top player in him. He's gone and become not just. I'm talking about one of the world. I mean, maybe one of the world's best yeah. ever goal scoring midfield players. You know, you. Oh, he were, he were different. He's different class. Different class wasn't. And he? by yeah. the way, you're right. Bright, intelligent, witty, good, detailed, wants to learn. You know, I mean, I was the, I was I, I loved. I mean, that's why John Harvey went to Oldham. I grabbed him because he he gave me a, a rugby league sort of mentality you know, we did swimming we did all sorts of different things that no one had ever done we were in the swimming yeah. pool in Oldham at 7.30 in the morning you know locals were looking wow. at us like we were crazy so um, and the lads ended up loving it I mean it, you know we, we did when we do 60, 70 lengths it was proper it wasn't messing about so we, yeah. you know I think now the game's evolved into another level and, and it's all that empathy you have with the players is now very very important now yeah I agree I, think, I, think I agree that's a little bit I think there's a touch of that maybe Bielsa with language how he gets that empathy with his players yeah. seems a little bit more distant but I answer, I've talked talk to his assistant manager after games and he's very eloquent so I think he may be the one that does it but there's no doubt if you can say well done in that tongue I'm sure he can but that, that thing from your manager makes such a difference so the empathy side of it must be difficult for Marco Bielsa because, because yeah. he, Marcelo he, he, Marcelo, because of what he's done, you know what I mean? And I don't, I don't, that's not, he's an amazing coach, but I just think people need to pat an arm around the shoulder now. That's just the nature of anyone in life, you, me, anyone. Mm. I agree. Well, listen, Ian, we're running out of time. In fact, we've nearly run out of time, but thank you so much for joining us today, mate. I, I really Pleasure. appreciate it. Thank uh, you, man. Keep being safe and uh, hopefully we'll chat to you again in the future, Ian, but thank you very, very Good much God. for joining us. Thanks for having me. See you later, mate. Bye, Goodbye. mate. Bye.